What's up, Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. 20 years in the game. I always speak on prison. Now I want to start doing a series of videos called My Crazy Life. This is episode number one. Stay tuned for a great video at the new Matt Clark. So what's good, Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Wednesday? I'm doing great, my girl's great, my family's great, and I hope each and every one of you are great. So, I wanna say thank you to each one of my 1,595 subscribers. You guys mean the world to me. The movement is real, the movement is growing. Thank you very much for your support. I'm gonna keep on trucking. I wanna say please hit that like button. And if you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, it helps the movement grow. And there's a PayPal option if you would like to donate, help and support the channel. The link will be in the des description. So, I'm always talking about drama and prison fighting and addiction and people being sad. So I'm gonna tell a funny story but it also has a point, okay? So back in the day, I used to hang out with a lot of dudes that did Special K, and I used to do it, but this was before I was really into it, okay? So it would really upset me when my one buddy would do it all the time because basically, it turns you into like a five-year-old. Like it basically makes you incapable of functioning as a human being or as an adult. Uh, you're kind of, you know, it's a tranquilizer, obviously. It cuts off your nervous system sometimes. And you can be fully anesthetized and pass out if you do too much. But if you don't do too much, you just get really stupid, slow, and kind of dumb. Your motor skills are kind of like shaky, okay? So I remember this one day. My buddy slept over at my house. I was living at Shooter and Mutual, kind of beside Moss Park. And we were going out. We had to do some things. And I said to my buddy, I said, look. I know you love that stuff, but just wait till we get back. Please don't do any. He goes, nah, I'm not going to do any. I said, all right. So he, before we walk out, he goes into the washroom. Obviously, I should have clued in. That's what he's doing. He's a drug addict. What else would he have been doing? But I just assumed that he would have respected my wishes and not done it. We come out. He literally takes about 10 steps down the street. And he starts like, ooh, 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 like doing this Gumby walk sideways down the street. It's like, uh, it's like if he starts walking, he's going to crash into something to stop. Okay, that's what happens to him. So we go to Young and Dundas. There's a couple things that we have to do. And when we get to Young and Dundas, I turn around and the man's gone. I, I literally cannot find him. So I'm searching around, looking around. Guess where I find this dude? He is at the corner of Young and Dundas at two o'clock in the afternoon on a hot summer day, okay? And the man is spinning around in circles going, boop, 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 boop. The man is like six foot four, 220 pounds. He's standing at the corner of Young and Dundas with his hands to his side, his face to the sky, going boop, 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 as he's doing 360s really quickly. Me being humiliated, but also concerned about my friend, because in this state, he cannot be safe. He doesn't know what's going on. He could walk out into traffic. He could harass somebody who just smacks him. Who the hell knows what could happen to him, but it's not safe. So because I care about my friend, even though I'm extremely angry at him at this point, I go, I walk over to him. He's got K halos all over his nose which if anybody knows, it's a crystalline substance. When you sniff it, it turns into liquid. And then as it leaks out of your nose, it dries and leaves halos. That's what they call them, K-halos, okay? I'm sitting there with a Kleenex, spitting on a Kleenex, wiping it off his nose like I'm his mom. At the corner of Young and Dundas, because it's super heat bag. I go down into the liquor store. I tell him to wait outside and do not move. And I don't mean outside on the street. I mean down in the atrium, 
down at the bottom where where you come out of the liquor store people who are from toronto know where i'm talking about i tell him wait there i go and i do what i have to do i come out he's gone i have no idea where he's gone i look down the hallway the man comes do, 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 bouncing out of the guest smashes right into the wall and he's literally like unaware of what's going on around him totally oblivious and this is what this stuff does to you i remember one time he was at a rave with this girl and somebody came up to him and literally seriously said to him oh that's really nice do you bring him out often or said to his girl do you bring him out often now I'm laughing because to me it's hilarious. The stories are hilarious. I have multiple versions of these stories. I mean, the guy was crazy. He was my best friend. I miss him, but I can't be around him. He's not the same person. His brain doesn't work the same anymore. He's paranoid. He's still doing illegal sh crap, I'm sure. Even though I haven't seen him for years, I can guarantee it. I just can't be around him. And it breaks my heart. And at that, that time, I should have seen the uh, regression of his mind and of his maturity uh, and his intellect. And I didn't see that. And it makes me sad now to think about it because maybe we could have helped him. He's a very stubborn person. Uh, there'll be lots of stories where I talk about him. Now, I won't mention his name uh, because I still have mad love for him. But I feel like... With him, I could actually teach a lot of lessons. This is a person who does not respect drugs, did not respect the amounts that he did, did not care what kind of drugs he did, did not take any precautions at all, and he definitely paid for it. Now, he's alive, right? And God bless to that. But definitely, there's been damage done. And it's sad. And this is the reality, okay? A lot of people that do drugs for a long period of time, uh, especially a lot of designer drugs and crystal meth and stuff like that, it really has a major impact on your brain, okay? Uh, a lot of the other drugs have physical impacts on your liver and on your body and definitely on your chemicals, uh, like your serotonin and stuff like that. But the damage that crystal meth and some of those things do to your brain. And Special K, let me tell you something right now. Special K crystallizes and runs through your system. Now, if anybody's done a lot of Special K, you'll know what K pains are. Now, after that stuff has run through your system and tore it apart, you'll get these pains when you do it a lot that just, it's like there's major, major abdominal pains. And that is from K. And believe me, I've seen lots of people overdose on it. I've seen lots of people put themselves in very, very, very dangerous situations on it. So if you are somebody who has any intentions of using Special K, make sure that you're in a safe situation. I would never, ever, ever promote any drug use. Uh, and I would think that obviously the better idea is for you not to do it at all. But the reality is that there's a lots of lots of people that do these things and don't really care what anybody has to say. And sometimes people have to learn the hard way, right? But Special K is one drug that I would definitely recommend that you stay away from. I don't see a whole lot of positive upside to it. When you do it, you feel cold, you feel lonely. And sure, you will have epiphanies and major breakthroughs like major hallucinogenic visions and stuff like that, uh, out-of-body experiences because of what it does to your nervous system. But, man, it is it can be scary and it can be really bad for your bladder. Uh, it can I, they're starting to think that maybe it causes incontinence incontin and stuff like that. So all I'm saying is this. If you're going to choose to do these things, do them wisely. Make sure you're in a safe situation, a safe environment with people who care about you, with the right safety precautions thought about and prepared for beforehand. Now, most of these drugs, uh, psychedelics and K and stuff like that, are more anti-addictive than addictive. But still, there's always somebody who will become addicted to that stuff. So be careful. Uh... I definitely think that 
any drug in the wrong person's hands can get out of control. And there's a small group of people that can use drugs socially and remain in control. I definitely know that I'm not one of those people. And there's not really a whole lot of them out there. Okay, because the reality is a lot of our lives are really crap. You know, we work really hard. We don't feel like we're rewarded enough. You know, it definitely feels a lot of the time like uh, you're being held back, right? And no matter how hard you work, you just can't break through and things just won't get easier. So a lot of people go to drugs, right? They, they, uh, they need that crutch to get them through. And a lot of people use illegal drugs and a lot of people use pharmaceutical drugs. Either way, it's not great. If you have to use drugs to cope, that's not the answer. So definitely, you definitely have to think about these things before you use any drug. Are you the kind of person that can? Are you the kind of person that should? Uh, you know, that's not for me to say. That is for you to think about. Uh, but I definitely think that the, the number one goal for anybody uh, should be no, do no drugs at all. Like I said in a past video, Johnny Tapia says, try it once, it's a mistake, try it twice, it's a habit. I know he's speaking about cocaine, but there's lots of other drugs that that uh, can pertain to. So please take heed to my videos. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, that would be amazing. There's a PayPal option if you would like to donate, help, and support the channel. The link will definitely be in the description. Uh, to all the people who have donated in the past, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully we have some big things coming on this channel. I want to really learn how to be more tech savvy. I just don't have a lot of time because I work so much. So uh, we'll see how that goes, but I'm definitely going to work on that soon. Better lighting. Uh, better mic system, all of that. Uh, but anyways, once again, man, to my 1,595 subscribers, thank you, thank you very much. It means the world to me that you guys take the time out of your day to watch my videos, to comment on my videos, and to help me get through my recovery. So thank you very much. New Mac Clark.